Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Ambrose Igboke. He's a global affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. No, good morning. And thanks for having me today. Thank you. All right, so we'll be starting with the Vanguard today, and it talks about minimum wage. This is a um, topic that has been flogged so much, but... Well, our governors have something to say today, and they've said, let each state negotiate what it can pay. And that is being said by the governors. The writers here says, Sinubu NEC silent on minimum wage. Public private workers getting restive over delayed minimum wage labor. Wants um, labor leaders to push for quick resolution. Another says, lament hardship becoming unbearable with basic necessities no longer affordable and another says we are not happy with sinubu's slow motion and that has been said by sanu so now um i mean if we're just going to take a little bit of backstory labor has proposed initially 1 million then 615 then 492 um, and right now it stands at 250. The federal government, on the other hand, said they were going to do 25 to 35 percent, and so they went to about 48,000, then 54, and right now it stands at 64,000. Now, each state governors, some of them have come out to say we cannot even pay that amount. 60,000 naira is too much, but as of today, they're saying they want to negotiate what, what each state can pay. And what does that mean for other workers? Because there might be some states, there were some states that said they could only pay about 35,000. Some of them said 40,000 naira. But guess what? The price of goods and services remain the same for most of these states. So what does that mean for the common man if each state wants to pay what they can afford, which might be different from the other ones? Uh, well, I have uh, said it in other fora, and I will repeat it here, that it is a blatant economic lie for any governor to say he cannot pay the 62,000 naira minimum wage mm. or the 60,000 naira minimum wage. Every state in Nigeria, despite their economic status, can pay that minimum wage. The governors are not telling us the truth about this. The governors are not telling us about both seen and unseen incomes. The governors are not telling us about how they want to cut costs of governance to be able to pay that money. They retain all the affluence of office and all the razzmatazz and all the uh, profligacy of office, and they are telling the workers that there's no money. Meanwhile, the workers see them live large. So no worker can believe that. So it, it is um, uh, playing the ostrich, or uh, not a very, uh, you know, factual for governors to come tell us that they don't have a uh, you know, amount to pay minimum wage. Every governor can say it, they can pay it. And one of the governors has also come out to say, no, if you say you cannot pay this, that is not the truth. Even their security vote alone can pay these things. So I don't know why we are talking about, some of them will talk about FAC, you know, federal allocation. It's not true. FAC is not the only income states have. Uh, you know, states have uh, internal generation revenue, they have uh, taxes, they have other uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, revenues they accrue. Um, so if any governor truly says they cannot pay, then that governor is not governing well. Uh, because that means you are not tapping the natural resources, you are not tapping the human resources, you are not tapping the business opportunities that is uh, prevalent in your states. So um, if a governor truly says and shows us the book and they cannot pay, then that governor has no business being a governor. Because if you have business being a governor in all the states in Nigeria, there are economic activities to exploit, to be able to raise money enough to pay your workers well, just as you are paying yourself well as governor, just as you are paying your political appointees well, just as you are paying your commissioners well. Oh, well, <laughs> the governors will Ministries, keep... and uh, departments and agencies of your states also have to end well. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, like, like Rumer said, it's something that has been flogged so much. So let's just wait and see what's going to be because uh, we hear that a definite thing was still not arrived at uh, when these uh, governors met, like what... what uh, amount they were going to pay. Mm -hmm. We've also heard that the president even who said he was going to consult widely is silent about 
about the minimum wage. And we wonder what is happening. Uh, maybe they are waiting for labor to go on strike once more before they can rise up and not just strike. The strike has to involve airports so that none of them can, can travel, travel as well. Okay, but um, we have this story also, a small headline here. Tinubu approves 50,000 Naira grant, 155 billion Naira food package for households. Would like your comment on it, please. Well, I, I have always been against uh, this conditional cash transfers to households, uh, which was started by the former government of uh, President Buhari. Um, it is not anything near economic impact it has no sustainability. It has no, um, you know, sustainable impact on the people who receive it. It is not anchored on businesses, on small-scale businesses. It is not anchored on any economic growth uh, uh, analysis. It is just that you are giving money, like doing uh, what we call sadaka, or just giving uh, arms giving. Uh, are, are we, so that means the Nigerian citizens have been turned to beggars, and then the government, the only thing government can do instead of providing them. Uh, the basic necessities of life instead of creating conducive business environment instead of trying to tackle the the naira dollar parity so that the things they want to import for industries can work instead of subsidizing education subsidizing petroleum and subsidizing health and other subsidizing housing and other things that would make the conditions of the citizens better you just throw money at them and that is because even this money throughout them where are the statistics I mean, we just saw the, the, the uh, corruption that was uh, uh, the former minister of disaster management was accused of because some of these names were just brought in from anywhere. So who monitors it? Who knows how many households that have been given money? And so this kind of thing, uh, you know, baffles me in the 21st century that a, a, a country will just wake up in the midst of uh, uh, hyperinflation, in the midst of uh, unemployment and all these things, you just wake up and then you say you're transferring uh, money to citizens to do what with? After the person spends the money to buy uh, necessities like food and other things, what happens the next week? What happens the next month? What happens the next year? So this is one of the most um, uh, incongruous economic policies I've seen in modern time. And it does not hold any water. And I think the government should stop this and concentrate more on building the economy. This uh, arms giving they are doing in the name of condition conditional cash transfer mm -hmm. is only impoverishing Nigerians and turning Nigerians to more beggars. Hmm. Well, piggy banking off that on the punch, it says federal government rolls out one million, one trillion naira palliative massive construction projects. The writer says 3.7 million families to get 540 billion naira grants, 155 billion naira for sorted foods orders. But here is what we want to talk about: federal government to begin massive roll rail construction. CNG buses now, they had said they were going to give about 100 CNG buses, which we still haven't seen so far. So CNG buses distribution in states and, you know, the FCT. What's your take on all of this? Begin massive road, rail construction. Um, most times they come out and they say, this is what we want to do. And you're seeing them spend a lot of money on roads and railway construction. Meanwhile, if you check our counterparts, maybe other countries, they don't spend as much on infrastructure. Do you think this is just a way for them to come out and, you know, tell the public, you, this is what we're going to do, make promises that might not be fulfilled. And even, even when they are fulfilled, it is a huge chunk of our budget. And so um, our monies are being siphoned through this project. Your comments, please. You know, um, uh, in the last uh, uh, eight years, or uh, le let me say 13 years, we started during the time of uh, uh, President uh, Goodluck, uh, Jonathan. Uh, the country has invested so much in massive rail, first of all, revamping the old uh, rail lines, and then, uh, you know, constructing new ones. And uh, I must commend the federal government in that trajectory. The only problem is that uh, the southeast was totally cut off from the rail project during the last uh, government and don't know why why they are constructing rails in all parts of the other parts of the country the southeast was not given any uh, any rail line and one keeps wondering whether southeast is still part of nigeria so that is unfair and i hope that in this uh, new design the southeast will be compensated for the old one and they're also giving a new uh radio we have rail line all the way from Enugu to uh, Port Harcourt to so other parts of the country, 
and uh, uh, such is deserves uh, to have some rely by the federal government. These are the kind of investments that the federal government should be doing, not conditional cash transfer and, and all those. Government should build roads, government should build uh, infrastructure like the rail line, and then government should create conducive environment for investors to come. Government has no business uh, giving uh, CNG buses. Here they come again. Is the government a contractor? Is the government a, a, a private business owner? What the government can do, just like what um, Lagos State did that time with the BRT buses, was to have some kind of arrangement with the, uh, with the, uh, with the college first cooperative that time. They had an arrangement with one of the banks, and then the government stood as a guarant a guarantor, uh, Lagos State stood as a guarantor, and then the, the uh, bank funded those things. And then there's a kind of payback, you know, uh, while the thing is running. That is how to approach this kind of things. Not government bringing money. Is it the Ministry of Transport that will run it? Remember those days we used to have uh, federal mass assisted uh, mass transit buses all over the country. Where are they now? That one was mass assisted. So where are they? So uh, some of those things, uh, we keep on doing things the way we did it 40 years ago, 30 years ago. I mean, are we not moving forward as a people? All we need to do is create the enabling environment. If government wants to help uh, the you know prevalence of uh, CNG buses in Nigeria, government should work with through the NNPC and the other private sector uh, players in the oil and gas industry to build gas uh, uh, stations, just have half filling stations uh, around the country. You can even start with the NNPC franchise stations or mega stations to have CNG to have gas stations where the CNG can uh, uh, buses can power. Then provide some kind of uh, uh, tax waivers and the import duty waivers and some other incentive you can give to the importers and the operators of this thing. They'll bring these uh, CNG buses in and then they'll operate. You can even give them a tax holiday if you want so that to encourage people to bring it. Not you're going to buy the buses, 100 buses for a population of 200 million. We, we are jokers. Sometimes we, we will behave as if we are just uh, in the theater of uh, clowns playing uh, games. I mean, how, how do we behave this way? Mm. Bring 100 buses for 37, uh, 36 days for Abuja, 37. How many buses will you bring? So the government should stop this. Use the money for the buses. Do uh, gas stations around. Use the NNPC. Uh, we can start with the NNPC. Involve other marketers, other uh, downstream uh, uh, marketers. Let's have these uh, CNG stations so that then, you know, we get our economic conducive atmosphere to be able to, for uh, private people to come in. That's all what we need. Government has no business buying CNG buses. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, um, let's move to the Punch newspaper. And if you look at the Punch newspaper of uh, the 26th of June, the same top right-hand corner is where you find also a story uh, that we're going to take from the top right-hand corner of the Punch of today. Now, in, on the 26th, the Senate president said, Senate didn't approve new presidential jet. And then when you come today on that same corner, you find the same Senate president saying blackmail can't stop new presidential jet approval. Two sides of the, say, two sides of the mouth, the same person just talking uh, as far as I'm concerned. But this presidential jet, as it stands now, they are going to buy a new presidential jet for our president. Would like your comment. Well, uh, that is part of the, uh, you know, Things I said earlier that you are telling the workers you cannot afford uh, minimum wage. You are telling Nigerians to tighten their belt, and you are losing your own belt. You know, okay. You say you want to you buy a new presidential jet that the other one was faulty. I thought forty planes were being who can be repaired. If you say you are not going to repair the forty plane, you have uh, as at the last time Buhari took over, we had eleven jets. We are told that there were eleven uh, jets in the presidential fleet. And Buhari said he was going to convert it to Nigeria Airways. It never happened. Now, we have a president who has entered the game and is requesting the new jet to join those ones. So if a president really needs a jet, as we are ought to uh, believe, let him sell the ones that are packed there. What are we doing with uh, 11 presidential jets that are not working? So economic uh, uh, you know, uh, process means that you sell what you don't need to fund what you need. So sell those ones off. And then uh, tell Nigerians how much you make from it, and then buy a new jet. Why are you budgeting for a new jet when the country is in desperate? The same government bought a yacht last, uh, a, a luxurious yacht for the president to, uh, to, uh, to float in the sea at several millions of dollars. Now we are going to embark on a plane. Then at the same time, 
the government will sit down with labor and negotiate and say there's no money. The same thing at the governors. You fly pri private jets, you do all this, and then you tell the, uh, the, the citizen that you don't have money to pay 60000 for minimum wage. So I don't know whether these people think we are idiots, uh, or a bunch of uh, people without uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, medulla oblongata inside our skull. This is not how to uh, behave with your citizens. This is not, uh, this is opaque. And then what happened at the Senate yesterday, I, I think was a, a kind of uh, trying to bully the press. Uh, uh, a Guardian the reporter was singled out and uh, was, was told to, that they were invite him. Why they didn't have, uh, they, you know, a simple letter who, the, to clarify issues written to Guardian would have solved that matter. Not to come on national television during a house session, somebody moved a motion to invite. I mean, we have trivialized, you know, the the, the, the hollow chamber of the Senate. And we, that, that we now talk as people who are somewhere bantering. How can you, you know, a simple letter from the, the Senate Committee uh, on Information, we will do that. You write a letter to Gary and say, we need to clarify, somebody made some report, your, your reporter did this and that. And then Gary will, will, will respond. Or you can take a court action if you feel that you have defamation or uh, libelous publication. That is how to go about it. But because they don't have any other thing to discuss for the betterment of Nigeria, you are raising the motion that you invite a reporter for what you probably... I mean, these things are frivolities, and uh, we, we should focus on governance, please. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's take this final one on the punch. It says, NNPC to boost economy with $4 billion um, gas projects. What do you think about this? So the NNPC has been said or rumored to be not very transparent when it comes to things um, that has to do with our gas sector or that has to do with our petroleum, petroleum sector. But here they come in and they're saying they would boost the economy with $4 billion gas projects. Your comments, please. Well, I, I, I think the NMPC has outlived this usefulness, the way it's presently constituted. Mm. When NMPC was formed in the 70s, it had role to play. But in the 21st century, NMPC, the way it is configured, has no role to play in the modern economic dynamics. Um, when we compare other state uh, petroleum companies, like Petrobras in, in Brazil, like Gazprom in uh, Russia, and even Saudi Aramco in Saudi Arabia, we will find out that these companies are being run, although they are state companies, but they are being run like a private entity. You know, they have, you know, business-minded approach. Here we have an NNPC that have not contributed uh, for many years, not even contribute to the National uh, Treasury, and they are earning fat salary. We are budgeting a humongous amount of money for them and the rest. So, for me, NNPC should be dismantled NNPC should be dismantled and transformed into a regulatory agency. Just like the Nigerian Communication Commission is not a player in the, uh, in the telecoms industry, it's a regulator. NNPC should be made a regulator in the oil and gas uh, you know, sector. Just like the NBC, Nigerian Broadcasting Cooperation uh, uh, Commission, is not a, a player, but a, a regulator. Just like a, a PENCOM, it's not a regulator. It's a regulator. I'm not a player in the pension uh, payment uh, platform. Nikon too, uh, insurance. So we have a plethora of uh, you know uh, uh, examples to give in Nigeria where the people are just uh, bodies are regulators regulating the private sector players, even the public sector player. But NNPC should be dismantled, and a new uh, uh, commission should be created to just be an oversight function and regulatory functions for the oil and gas industry. But NMPC being a competitor, uh, you know, running the gas, uh, oil and gas industry is more or less uh, a disadvantage to Nigeria. And I think we should take action. Mm. Okay. I think we should take yeah, action. Just, just that's, <laughs> and that is wrapping up this segment. Um, Amber, we want to say thank you so much for coming. Thank you for reviewing the papers with us. We hope that the government is listening and they start to, um, you know, do certain things. We need to take action if we say that we want um, a better economy, if we want to boost production, if we want to be able to export and get more revenue. It is important that we look at these things and start to take action. But I want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.
All right, so we've been speaking with Dr. Ambrose Igboke. He is a global affairs analyst, and we've just been taking stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. It talks about Niger Delta communities threatening to cripple oil production over Kanye's continuous detention. Please stay with us.